There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, current science nerds, future science nerds. I'm a current science nerd, by the way. I have been for some time. Welcome to our 2013 Cool Chemistry demo show. See, this is not off to a good start because that pause makes me sound like I'm begging for applause, which I'm not, not yet. Thank you. So, uh, a couple of announcements first. For those volunteers that we are going to have on stage, have your tickets ready. We're going to make sure that the house lights are on between each demonstration, and if the current demonstration, the one that's coming up, will involve helpers from our audience, I will call out the numbers from the tickets. Please come on stage. When you come on stage, go towards that exit sign. Kevin, Emily, helpers, were my students last year. We'll be giving you gloves and goggles. We are always going to be safe on stage, so all the students currently performing a demonstration, any helpers, and myself, will always be wearing at least goggles. Uh, and, when, and when we work with anything particularly sensitive to the hands, we also wear gloves. So just in case, everyone who comes up on stage will have gloves too. I will ask you, if you do come up on stage, to follow the instructions, my instructions, or my students' instructions, some of the chemicals we work with, as always, are dangerous, so make sure you do everything that you are told. All we want to do is have a fun, safe time tonight. We have 15 demonstrations. Lots of whiz, lots of bang, extra special amounts of bang this year. And I have my, one of my own personal favorites. The idea for this show is not only to have fun, but do a little bit of what I will call scientific literacy. Uh, because we do so much with science and technology these days, any little bit of information that I can pass on, regardless of how small the person who's learning, that's the benefit that I hope to give. And that's what makes me happy. So, without further ado, the first demonstration, Katie and Haley doing Genie in the Bottle. Uh, and let me say that Haley uh, gets a degree of difficulty because she happened to suffer a broken leg earlier this year and has been doing lab just the same, getting around a little bit more difficult. Chemistry is dangerous. <laughs> the broken leg was not in lab, I guarantee you. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I didn't see it happen. I'm always in lab. Okay, so, genie in the bottle. This is a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and manganese oxide. of hydrogen peroxide and the magnesium dioxide releases the oxygen and creates our quote unquote genie. And this particular reaction can be a little bit finicky, so and particularly vigorous. Apparently there are two genies in that particular bottle. There's nothing wrong with it working extra special well. Maybe we should give it an extra minute just in case it keeps going. Laughter is always good. <laughs> Thank you, Katie and Haley. So those are two of my organic students. This is their second year doing this particular uh, show, and hopefully they'll come back. So anyone who happens to graduate and wants to come back and participate, email me. You're more than welcome. Okay, our next, set of, our next trio is Lauren, Amira, and Maya. And they're going to do Diet Coke and Mentos. So, we need three volunteers. So remember, volunteers go to that side, towards Kevin and Emily. So, I'm going to try to mix these up. This is from the younger group, the five to eight group. Don't worry, we'll get the older group a little bit later. So, I have 703-771, 703-771. 
I have 703641. 703641. And I have 703716. So the last three numbers of each ticket. 771, 641, 716. Please come on down. You're the next contestants on The Price is Right. I think I make that joke every year. Helpers will come up front now. So we have three bottles of Diet Coke in our blue chamber. Now, those of you that want to try this at home, one, I would suggest doing this outside. It can be messy. Two, Diet Coke is the one, the soda that works best. Um, and it, there's an episode of Mythbusters where they try a whole bunch, they mix all the chemicals together. It is Diet Coke that works best. So make sure if you do try this, it is Diet Coke. I am not speaking for the Coca-Cola company. It's just what works best. Okay, so. Make sure you step back quickly when you do this. very much. You can go back to the side and give your goggles and gloves. So, this is the reason why I suggest doing this outside. This is why we keep the, uh, yep, it's still going. One of them. This is why we have the uh, plastic drop cloths down, because it saves for cleanup later for the, so the custodial staff doesn't have to do too much later. Okay. Now, the first bangs. Drew and Pichu are going to be doing a various number of balloons, and so this time we're going to have the older group. Let me mix these up properly. Okay. First number, 703715. 703715. So last three digits. 736 715. 713715. Okay, so in the various balloons that we have, some contain just hydrogen, one of them contains hydrogen and oxygen. And we will set them off one, then one, then ten. Uh, never done ten before, but I have a feeling it'll be safer than the big one we did last year. Okay, so hydrogen burns just like any fuel. So our two helpers are going to set off the individual balloons here now. These are pretty loud, so if you're sensitive to sound, I would cover your ears. Can I have the lights down, please? and it should be louder.
Okay, now, thank you helpers. Uh, if you go back to the side and you're, deposit your goggles and gloves, we'll wait for them to sit down before we set off our chain reaction. These are just hydrogen balloons, but there's 10. So, if we just set one off, the rest should set off. Okay, here we go. those balloons. I've been doing that ever since I was in college, and that was a long time ago. Um, my heart's kind of racing in that one. <laughs> I'm going to take a few deep breaths. Okay, thank you, Drew and Beecher, for those hydrogen balloons. Next year, we'll try 20. <laughs> oh, okay, not 100. Okay. Now, I have two more organic students, Garrett and Andrew, and they are going to do like a podium power and a flame tornado in combination. So we need one more older assistant. 703734. 703-734. Please proceed to the right of the stage. to be like a podium powder. This is dragon's breath, and we're gonna have it. So, like a podium is a moss. If you dry that moss, the spores end up becoming very fine. It looks sort of like flour, but it's even finer than that. In fact, it's actually used as a binding agent. You can find like a podium powder sometimes used in ice cream. I found that out last year. It's very strange to hear that, but. If you blow it through a flame, well, we'll see what happens. Ready? Okay. Okay. So. And we need a good, strong breath for this. The next part of this is going to be a little bit more complex, so we're just trusting our chemists with this. So, we're going to do a flame tornado. Yeah, I'll do it up here. So, what we have here is a turntable. And to protect the turntable, which is made of bamboo, we have a little bit of foil. We don't want to set the turntable on fire. And we have and alcohol, methanol, and while we could just light the flame tornado the normal way with the lighter, it's all right, go ahead, forget the 75%, just, just do it, okay, all right, just, all right, that's fine, yeah. Um, sometimes you'll hear me use the phrase, go big or go home. That's what the 10 balloons was all about. Yeah. So, Garrett's going to set this, hopefully. I'll step back. Yeah. 
One of the important things about these demonstrations is that sometimes they don't always work. But we have a backup on this one, so I think we can get this one to work. And if, and if it doesn't work this way, that will still be flammable and we'll get the flame tornado to work. So, oh, yeah. It's a good thing you have that foil because it is. to get the flame extinguisher out unless absolutely necessary. It's still burning. That's why I'm here. I don't actually do any chemistry. I just put out fires. I'm supposed to be funny. Trust me, it's all, it's safe. Okay, thank you, Garrett and Andrew. I really like that fire tornado one. By the way, you can do this one at home with parental supervision. Um, the turntable I got at Walmart. I also got the uh, waste bucket there. It's mesh, so you need to make sure you have air going through. Uh, and if you use something like wood alcohol, it will work just fine. The green color that we use came from borax, so borax detergent you could use for that too. So all of that you could make at home if you wish. Okay, next up, Austin and Emily doing homemade bouncing balls. We need one helper from the younger audience. 703650. 703650. Please proceed to the right of the stage. Super Bowl, if you're particularly young, I suggest you do. It's fun. I used to get them all the time. I used to beg for a quarter for the little machines, and at that point it was Kmart, and got one and used to bounce it everywhere, and then it would just completely disappear. Well, you can actually make them. Now, these aren't going to be Super Bowls, but if you use the right polymer, you can get them to bounce. And we're going to be starting with a sodium silicate solution. So the combination of sodium silicate and ethanol will make a silicone polymer, a very simple one. Austin, if you can list that up. So for those who may not be able to see very well from the top, it is now a sort of white jelly. And if you form a ball in your hands, and squeeze out the excess alcohol.
and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. That's the other thing about science experiments. Many of them don't go instantaneously like an exploding balloon. And, and my Gen Chem and organic students will, 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 could tell you, sometimes it takes three hours to do an experiment. And they're usually looking at me with evil eyes if that happens. Okay, let's have our assistant try to bounce it. So, sodium silicate, another name for sodium silicate is water glass, and that is something I think you can get from craft stores. So, that with a little bit of alcohol, and you can make your own bouncy balls. Now, one thing you can do also with that is add a little bit of food coloring and make all sorts of interesting colors. So, thank you to our assistant, thank you to Austin and Emily. Now, it's my turn. is a little bit of ethanol. And what I want to do is get some of that ethanol, if not most of it, to vaporize. And so this is going to take a little bit of effort. And let me tell you that I have a four-month-old son, and he likes to be carried. So my arms are a lot stronger than they used to be. <laughs> and everyone always asks me, well, do you hope he turns out to be a scientist? If he does, that's great. And if not, as long as he's a nice guy, we're not going to force it on. And those people who have not been here before, my wife is also a chemist. And those of you interested in going to another Cool Chem show, hers is next Thursday at UW Manitou. So she gets free advertising. And she always does her second, so she always gets free advertising. Now I need to make sure I pour out all the liquid here, so all that's left should be vapor. Oop, not quite. Now you could do this with any number of alcohols. I've chosen ethanol, but you could do this with methanol. You could even do this with rubbing alcohol. But I have the lights down, please. This one is kind of loud. Here we go. Now, unfortunately, the bottle's a little too hot for me to try again, and I don't have another one. But I could do this with any number of alcohols, and if I wanted to turn that green, I would just use the borax that Andrew and Garrett used for their flame tornado. So that is called the Wusher bottle. Now, when you combust something in a small in a space like that, the gas that's formed has to escape. And so the rush of air that you get from that gas is what makes the loud sound. So, we'll come back to that one because we'll be able to do something like that again. Okay. Next is Doug and Chloe. And they have a $20 bill of mine that they are going to not set on fire. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, we're going to need two helpers. So, we're going to do this out in front here. So we'll make sure everyone will be able to see. We're just keeping everything up here for the time being. Okay. Two helpers. 703-651. 703-651. And 703-654. So last three digits. 651, 654. Please go to the right of the stage.
Okay, now, on the list I have for the show, this is called the non-burning $20 bill, but we're actually going to do three things here. The first one is going to be mine, and then our helpers are going to do two other ones. Now, those of you that are sitting in the back of the stage may not see this, but this is a $20 bill. In fact, it came from my wallet. So, we're, so whatever happens to this is my fault. That's why I'm doing this one. Can I have the lights down, please? Okay, now, one of the things about our dollar bills up to, I don't know which, $500 bills, is that they don't absorb a lot of liquid. Now, you may not be able to see this from where you are, but you saw the flame. This is $20 bill is undamaged, and I can still buy more chemistry supplies with it. <laughs> Although it smells a little bit like alcohol. I don't want to spend it just yet. Okay, now we're going to go bigger. So, first help. Where? Ah. So, we're going to go from a bill to a towel. Can I have the lights down, please? Now, what is in the magic solution is a combination of alcohol and water. The alcohol burns and the water protects the piece of fabric, hopefully. Okay. Also contained within the liquid is some salt. So which salt is in this one? Potassium was in that one. And strontium. You might have to spread this out so they can see it. Now this is a t-shirt with an approved slogan. Oh, it ran. I don't think so. It's on the other side. Oh, is it? Is it on the other side? Okay. It's a Chem Rocks. Okay. Be careful. Light it up. That's always a fun thing to say. Be careful. We do have a bucket of water under this, just in case. Oh. are not harmed. Much. <laughs> so, the water protects the fabric, and so you can see that they might just be barely singed, but they are largely protected. I, I would like to keep that t-shirt, if you don't mind. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doug and Chloe. Now, this next one, I've never done this one. In fact, I've never done this in my life, which would probably shock people. But what we have next is a potato gun. So I would just go down in the front there. And, yeah. And 
a loaf. Okay. Now, I've never made a potato gun, but you can make one if you have PVC pipe, a little bit of flammable liquid, and an ignition source. So we tested this out the other day, and because potatoes can be a little bit hard, don't set it off until I move, by the way. Okay. We're going to use a tomato. And thank you, Garrett. I, I would actually move that way a little bit. That's a bit better. So, the idea is we're going to fire the tomato into this. If it's flatter, say great. Um, what Dom is going to be using is ether, a spray ether. In the chamber, it's going to ignite, and much like the Wooster bottle, it's going to force air out, and because we have a projectile, projectiles should come out. Now, I've seen this go a quarter of a mile with, with a potato. Um, I hope this works. Right? <laughs> I just need to clean them all. All right, screw it. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, at least we got one. Okay. 
Okay, next we have Ross, Gina, and Ben, and they're going to be doing magnesium and dry ice. This is another one of my favorites. Yeah, you can move away. Oh, it's fine. That's good. So, what we have are two large blocks of dry ice. These can be purchased, um, sometimes at gas stations, I get mine from Prax Air, you can also buy it at Air Gas. Now, one of the important things about dry ice, it is solid carbon dioxide, and the temperature is very, very cold. So, this is not ice you want to touch without gloves. So, anytime you handle dry ice, you want to make sure that you wear gloves, always. Even winter gloves may not be enough because it's so cold. Now, what they poured into the little chamber they made is solid magnesium, and they're going to light it and then put the other block on top. So I can't, can I get the lights down, please? is magnesium. So if you've ever seen a magician suddenly make a flame come out of the sleeve, that's magnesium powder. It reacts with oxygen, but magnesium also reacts with carbon dioxide. So that magnesium was burning while it was in an atmosphere of carbon dioxide surrounded by that dry ice. So what we have inside is carbon and magnesium oxide. Now I think I heard a question, why is it always white? The crystal form that ice makes both water ice and carbon dioxide when the light goes through, it doesn't. It, it basically makes white light, so that's why you always see it as white. Woo! I'm not sure how fast the smoke will dissipate, but I think it's safe to move at least. I've never seen it go that bright. Now, the other important thing about magnesium and why we cover it up is that if it was just burning, it would have been too bright to look at. In fact, I had to block a little bit. So, magnesium, when it burns, is a very, very white light, and it's very bright. So, don't try burning magnesium at home. Okay, so, next is Amanda, which unfortunately I have spelled incorrectly on the sheet. I'm sorry. Again. Uh, Rebecca, Heather, and Iris, and they're doing Elvin's Toothpaste. Now, we need a lot of helpers for this one. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to be announcing a lot of numbers, so let's... So pay attention to the numbers that I read out. Okay. I'm just going to read the last three digits, because I think the first three digits are all 703. You, yeah, you can dump it right in there. Okay. 721. Last three digits, 721. Please proceed to the right. This is going to be a combination. You read these right now are the younger set. 776. So we have 721 and 776. And 768. So the three younger ones, 721, 776, 768. And now the older crew, 729 and 725. So the five numbers that I have, 725, 729, 721, 776, and 768. You have won $3 million in the Powerball lottery. Sorry, just teasing. Okay, so 
we have five different experiments. All different versions of elephant's toothpaste. Now, there's one version of here, this, that you can do at home. If you have a two liter bottle, you need baker's yeast that has been mixed with water and warmed up, and you need, and you need a 3% hydrogen peroxide. That's the kind of peroxide that you can get over the counter. Now, the other version of this that we're going to do has hydrogen peroxide at 30%, and that is the, the concentration that salons use for hydrogen peroxide. So now we have, we have lighting effects because of all the smoke that's left. So cool lighting, cool special effects. So we're going to do this one at a time. So if we can have our helpers line up in the back here, so just come around the side. So each one of these experiments is going to involve a simple pour. So which one are we doing first? Okay, super. Okay. So why don't you put those up front so they can be seen. Okay. Perhaps the tallest person should do the graduated cylinder. Okay. We have too many choices. simple dishwashing detergent, so it's safe. So the fact that Rebecca has it on her hands is okay. <laughs> so if you do this in a smaller container, the foam, the soap, will come out faster. I think you can try to move those to the side. can make this foam is by releasing oxygen. So if you remember the genie in the bottle from the first demo, that reaction also released oxygen from hydrogen peroxide. This one does too. Yeah. 
what's, what's their down to do that good? Leave it for the time being. Okay, while we're still making toothpaste, this could go on for quite a while. We're going to go on to the next set of experiments, and that's burning salts with brandy and sand. So, we need two more helpers from the older group. As you can see, most of the time we do fire, it's going to be from the older group, just to be safe. Okay, so, last three digits, seven, six, five. Seven, six, five, and last three digits, 732. Last three digits. 732, 765. Please proceed to the right of the stage. an entire discipline of chemistry that's chemistry of fireworks. So anytime you see fireworks, a chemist helped to make them. And chemists use different salts to make different colors. So you have red and blue and green and yellows. So when this summer, the 4th of July, you're looking at those fireworks. And by the way, I live in Manitowoc. My, my in-laws live in Two Rivers. Two Rivers have the best fireworks. And they're easily seen from everywhere. Plug, plug. Um, I'm sure the fireworks around Sheboygan are great too. But the colors that you see are from different salts and they're packed into the material within the fireworks themselves and so when they explode and they burst into flame, you get different colors. Now we're gonna do it on a much more simple scale, but we're gonna make different colors. So can I get the lights down please? As with any flame, safety first. But what we're going to be using for our flame source is a propane torch. So pay close attention to the flame. It'll start out blue, but it's turning green. And I'm assuming this is copper? Boric acid, so it's boric acid, the same color that the flame tornado was. So that's one of them. Now we'll do another one. Which one is this one? Strontium. So strontium is generally orange and red. Sometimes the spray bottles don't work very well. There we go. Oh. Not too close. All right. So that was boric acid and strontium. Now, calcium is next. You could just keep the propane going. Anytime you can keep a torch going. So calcium is orange. So the mixture that they're spraying is water, alcohol, and a little bit of the salt. And you don't need very much in order to get that color. Okay, next one. Potassium, Potassium is next. It looks kind of whitish, but it's supposed to be purple. You can see a little bit of purple in there. It looks lavender. Okay. One more? Sodium is last. And that's orange. So when you think about fireworks and you see these colors in the summer, think about these different salts. Oh, you have copper, okay. This is copper metal. And if you put that metal right into the flame, you'll get some of that color. Okay. Okay.
Okay, thank you, assistants. The next one is a new one for me. That's Amber, Nick, and Jacob, and they're doing the barking dog. Okay, we'll, we'll try to clean up a little bit while you guys are getting set up. So, the barking dog is a reaction between the liquid carbon disulfide and nitrous gas. So, nitrous, there are two major uses, black and gas. So, if you've ever been to the dentist and you've been given gas, that's what nitrous is. The other is an additive for fuel. So, if you hear about nitrous or nitro in fuel for racing, it's the same gas. Now they're going to be mixing it in this length of PVC tube that we're capping. And once it's lit, well, you should hear a sound. So now they have to mix those two things together, hopefully get them to vaporize. And we're going to drop a lit piece of cotton in, and that will be the ignition source. I'm going to leave them on. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't always work. I would... Um, You want to try it again? Yep. Okay, try it again. We'll do it one more time. I would take that right outside, including the, and then including the grand flag, the grand that, 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 graduates. Sometimes I, you know, I have a dry mouth right now from speaking, so sometimes the words don't come out just for me. They'll come right back. Okay, so what can I talk about while they're getting ready? Science! Science! Okay, I can talk about science. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I would suggest, and I've always been asked about, you know, what, where can I find science experiments? Well, there are a lot of different books out there that you can use. There's also the internet as a resource, and so you could go to YouTube, there's a lot of cool videos out there. One of the things that I would caution you, and this is mostly for the parents, is sometimes those are fake. Sometimes they don't provide all of the ingredients, so make sure that when you go to any specific website, particularly YouTube, that they provide an ingredients list. There's a lot of things that you can do at home, and there's specific books that you can buy for kitchen chemistry and do at home. So you can make slime. So this is a good time to talk about slime. So I don't really make this announcement before the show. This is a good time. So after the show, everyone exits the stage, go to your left, all the way around, and the science building, the broad science building, is back to my left. Everyone who's here can make slime. So Professor Rukamp, as she does every year, and her students and some of the organic students that were up here earlier will be helping you make slime upstairs that you can take home. So everyone gets to take home something. So follow the balloons. I'll make it another announcement at the end of the show. The second floor of the science building is where everything's at. Now I can do the Jeopardy thing. Do, 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 do. Okay. 
I'm going to give them 10 more seconds before I get worried. I think the Gobby Bear Sacrifice guys can get their stuff up here. So, the next experiment we'll do is Gummy Sacrifice. But hopefully the barking dog people will come back. Hopefully they just haven't vanished into the rain. Well, that's next. Alright, go ahead and get this started. We don't want to make these people sit too long. Okay, so... While we wait for the barking dog group to come back, this is going to be gummy bear sacrifice. So, what Matt is heating right now is solid potassium chlorate. It is a strong oxidizing agent. And what we're going to do is sacrifice a little bit of candy. Now, who doesn't like candy? Okay, a few people. Again, who doesn't, does not like candy? Okay, eh, it's still a few. By the way, there's a, there's a lot of natural sugar in fruits, too, but in candy, it's much more concentrated. And that sugar can be reacted with this potassium chlorate, and all of the oxygen is liberated. So if you, if you think about a lot of the experiments we've done, it's liberating oxygen, the oxygen we breathe. Okay, they're back. So this will take a few minutes, so you guys can keep going. All right, we're going to try the barking dog again. Take two. Here we go again. I'm here to help. Okay, so, again, science experiments don't often work, but we learn something from it. And in that case, I think more nitrous was, was the result. Okay, so, we need two helpers. Two helpers from the older group. The sacrifice candy. 639, 722. 639 and 722, those are the last three digits of each ticket. So, please come up, get goggles and gloves. Okay, can I get the lights down, please? We're going to do one first. So all of the light and heat and more smoke is from the liberation of oxygen from sugar. So when you eat sugar, your body gets that energy. So now, your body doesn't make it that way. Wouldn't it be fun if our stomachs made our energy that way? Probably not. Now, your body has different biochemical ways of getting that energy, and that's how, when you eat sugar, for about an hour or two afterwards, you can go like crazy and then you crash. Now, what we're going to do next is try this not with another gummy bear, but with a peanut M&M. Now, at the center of the M&M, the peanut contains a lot of protein, and protein can be broken down too. It does take a little bit of time to melt all this solid, but we're getting there. 
It doesn't all need to be dissolved as long as we're close. Okay, so now we're going to try the peanuts. And as soon as you drop it in, step back. <laughs> peanuts are tricky. It's like those M&M commercials where the M&M is trying to escape. Go ahead. Step back. Step back. So apparently there's even more sh energy in sugar. Oh, uh, sorry. More, more sugar in an M&M. Now, step back. Step back. Eventually we'll get to the protein. Hopefully. Or not. <laughs> Okay, I guess it's finished. So that is how much energy you can get from a gummy bear and an M&M. So imagine eating a whole bag. So we only have two more demonstrations left, so hopefully the smoke that we make won't be too big of a deal. Now, the second to last one is thermite. pretty dangerous one. So no helpers on this one. Now, thermites, what we have is a mixture of iron oxide, basically rust, and aluminum powder. And the reaction will make molten iron. Now, the way we have this set up is that the molten iron should come through and into the sand. Now, this can get very bright, so watch your eyes on this. And how we're going to be setting this off is a sparkler. So, we're going to start this and then back away. Actually, hold on one second. Let me move this over. Okay. Lights off, please. Light up and set back. <laughs> step to the side, so. Go. One of the issues is that sometimes the iron doesn't go through, it goes out. So the sparks that you saw were molten iron. And if you look at the rubber that's on stage, this is a few years old that we've used this, and there's some holes. That's mostly from thermite. So, I would just leave it there. We'll just move the whole table. Okay, thank you. That was thermite. close to those pots, you can feel how much heat is coming off. Uh, molten iron, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's several thousand degrees. So, not something I want to touch at the moment. Okay, so, our last experiment of the night is Cody, Elliot, and Jason, and they're going to do an imploding can. This is going to be a 55-gallon drum. Now, what we have up here is a kiddie pool. Not something you would have stepped in because it's full of ice water at the moment. So in the back, they have been heating a 55-gallon drum with some water in it since the beginning of the show. So they're hoping to vaporize all of that water. And when you cool the entire can, you condense all that water, and it acts like a vacuum. We hope this works. Now, since they're ready to bring it up, It'll take a minute or two, and I'll just remind you that once the show is over, if you proceed out to the left, 
You can also go to the right if there's too many people. As long as you go around the Fine Arts Building, the Science Building is behind us. Go up to the second floor and there will be slime to make. So thank you very, I will say thank you now. Don't leave yet. Thank you very much for attending. I love doing this show. It's always a stress on me because we never know if these things will work. But it's always a good time. Okay, here we go. try this is to make sure that you get a good seal. And we don't hear any hissing. In fact, we don't hear anything at all. What's that? It was Okay. I don't know how long I should ban. <laughs> <laughs> so this still has the possibility to work. I'm not sure how long, how long I want to make you sit. So, so what I will do is say, while I'm talking for the next minute, hopefully this implodes. When we did this before, I wasn't paying attention and it happened, so maybe I can look away and it'll work. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much for coming to our show. We'll be back again next year. Same, same time, similar date, hopefully with better weather. So, I think we'll, we'll say that this unfortunately did not work and it sort of ended our show with a whimper. But we'll try it again next year. Thank you for coming. There's holmium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium and fluorine and terbium and manganese and mercanium and molybdenum and magnesium, dysprosium and scandium and cerium and cesium and lead, praseodymium and platinum and plutonium, palladium, promethium, potassium, polonium and tantalum, technetium, titanium, tellurium and cadmium and calcium and chromium and curium. There's sulfur, californium, and fermium, berkelium, and also mendelevium, einsteinium, nobelium, and argon, kryptonium, radon, xenon, zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin, and sodium. These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard. And there may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. Uh,